A defiant Governor Andrew Cuomo digging in even as Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand call him to quit over sexual harassment claims. Plus, alarming news out of Italy tonight where the country is on the brink of another lockdown as new COVID variants take hold. And a massive outpouring of emotion and anger in London after a police officer is charged with the kidnap and murder of a young woman. I'm Pamela Brown in Washington. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world. You are in the CNN newsroom on this Saturday. Great to have you along with us. And tonight, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is clinging to power in the face of multiple allegations of sexual harassment and unwanted advances. But he is increasingly isolated as many top state Democrats call on him to resign after a new accusation in New York Magazine. And the piece, a former political reporter who covered the Cuomo administration, says the governor sexually harassed her in front of colleagues on multiple occasions. She joins the growing list of women coming forward with allegations against Cuomo. But he is denying any wrongdoing and refusing to resign tonight. CNN's Athena Jones is in Albany, New York. So Athena, what do we know about these new allegations? Hi, Pamela. Well, they're coming from, as you said, a journalist, Jessica Bateman, who was a former uh, Capitol Beat reporter here in Albany, having covered the Capitol for several years. She writes in a first-person piece in New York, New York Magazine about what it was like to cover Governor Cuomo and alleges multiple instances of sexual harassment. Here's some of what she writes. She says, Andrew Cuomo's hands had been on my body, on my arms, my shoulders, the small of my back, my waist, often enough. She later says, Cuomo never let me forget I was a woman. Now, Bateman in this piece describes her job as being essentially to report on the governor's every move. And she says that these, these unwanted touches made her feel uncomfortable enough that she didn't even want to go to the holiday party at the executive mansion that she writes about in 2014 when she was 25. She says she describes her interactions with the governor at that party saying, he put his other arm around my back, his hand on my waist, and held me firmly in place and said, I'm sorry, am I making you uncomfortable? I thought we were going steady. I stood there in stunned silence, shocked and humiliated. But of course, that was the point. Uh, so she explains that she felt humiliated because this, 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 this joke about them going steady took place r right in front of her colleagues. Uh, she said that she never felt that the governor's actions were about wanting to have sex with her, but more about power, wanting to make her feel powerless. And she says that it, when it comes to, to women, the women who work for him, he uses touching and sexual innuendo to stoke fear in us. That is the textbook definition of sexual harassment. And now CNN has reached out to Bakeman for comment on these allegations. We've not heard back. We've also reached out to the governor's office for comment on these latest specific allegations. Uh, they have not responded, but the governor did address the allegations uh, overall uh, uh, during his press conference on Friday. Listen to what he had to say then. People know the difference between playing politics, bowing to cancel culture, and the truth. Let the review proceed. I'm not going to resign. I was not elected by the politicians. I was elected by the people. I never harassed anyone. I never assaulted anyone. Uh, I never abused anyone. Uh, to the extent you get these people who say, well, he took a picture with me and I was uncomfortable, I apologized for that. I have not had a uh, sexual relationship that was inappropriate, period. And so the governor uh, continues to say he did nothing wrong. He's not going to resign. Women uh, should have the right to come forward and be heard. But he's urging the public to let the investigations play out uh, to, to wait for the facts. Pamela. And Governor Cuomo is now the subject of an impeachment investigation. How could that play out? That's right. So first, we're, there, there's going to be an investigation uh, led by the, uh, the, the New York Assembly's Judiciary Committee. And then there'd have to be a vote to impeach in uh, the Assembly. There are 150 members. It'd have to be 76 members voting in favor of impeachment. Then uh, if that happens, if the governor were to be impeached, then the lieutenant governor, uh, Kathy Hochul, would be taking over then. And uh, the governor would stand trial in the Senate. It's similar to what you, we see uh, down in Washington. But in this case, the jurors would be the senators as well as the judges 
judges on the Court of Appeals. Uh, so there's 63 senators, seven uh, judges on the Court of Appeals. There would have to be a, a two-thirds vote to convict uh, the governor. So that is how the process would play out. Many steps to go uh, right now, just the investigation part. Pamela. All right. Athena Jones, thanks so much for the latest there in Albany, New York. Well, one year into the coronavirus pandemic, and it seems our future is just teetering on the razor's edge. On one hand, there is so much encouraging news about vaccines, and President Joe Biden is holding out the possibility that July 4th could mark the beginning of the end. But at the same time, some areas, like the entire state of Texas, are casting off mask mandates and reopening bars and restaurants. Listen to what this Houston doctor said about that. There are very few things that, you know, uh, people can predict, but I am sure we're going to have a surge. The last two days, I've already started to see a surge in cases. If you come to Texas, you would say, hey, the pandemic disappeared overnight. It is amazing. You go outside, all the clubs are, are packed, people not wearing masks. It's very disappointing. And check this, more people boarded airplanes Friday than any other day since the start of the pandemic. Well, more than 1.3 million people passed through TSA checkpoints, the most since March 15th of 2020, even though the CDC is still urging people to stay home unless absolutely necessary. And so far, more than 100 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered across the country. But for many people, vaccine hesitancy is a very real fear. And that means a very real concern for the rest of us. CNN's Miguel Marquez has more. As coronavirus vaccinations pick up steam, some aren't convinced it's safe. Enough of them could make it tougher to get back to pre-pandemic life. I think that people should be allowed to choose, have medical freedom. Jenna Padoni, a pharmacist, says she takes coronavirus seriously, isn't opposed to vaccines, but thinks getting one for COVID-19 is a matter of individual choice. It doesn't matter what Trump did. It doesn't matter what Biden's doing. What matters is do I get the choice to say what's good for me? Go with your sister. Nursing assistant and mom of three, Sequoia Downs, her youngest, only five weeks old, says she won't get the coronavirus vaccine because she does not believe the virus is a threat to her. I feel like I would be able to get, if I was to get sick, I'd get natural immunity to it and I would be you know, it wouldn't be as detrimental to me as someone else. Both Downs and Padoni say they support a bill making its way through the New Hampshire State House, barring punishment against those who refuse any coronavirus vaccine. We introduced House Bill 220, which is a Medical Freedom Act. The Granite State, one of 10, says the National Council of State Legislatures currently considering legislation allowing citizens to opt out of vaccinations, protect them from being punished for not getting it, or prohibit certain institutions from requiring them. That the state should never mandate to the 1.3 million citizens in New Hampshire some sort of medical intervention that they all have to have. Lang expects the bill to pass with bipartisan support after amending it to allow several exceptions like school vaccinations and some law enforcement medical emergencies. Is there any concern that we will not get to that herd immunity? I actually do not think this bill will change the vaccination rate. We don't have mandatory vaccines right now and people are still getting vaccinated. When it comes to hesitancy about getting the coronavirus vaccine, polls show a higher degree of skepticism among Republicans. In a new CNN poll, 46% of Republicans nationwide said they would not try to get the vaccine. Here in New Hampshire, 45% of Republicans said they almost certainly or probably would not get vaccinated. And that was CNN's Miguel Marquez reporting from New Hampshire there. Well, overseas this weekend, coronavirus cases are again surging in Italy, and the government is responding by locking down half the country. CNN's Delia Gallagher is in Rome this evening. Delia? Pam, Italians are preparing to move back into lockdown starting on Monday. Half of Italy's 20 regions, including cities like Rome, Milan, Venice, will be on full lockdown. And the weekend of Easter, normally so busy 
here will be a national lockdown. Authorities are saying that these measures are necessary because of the rise in transmission rate due to variants. The variant first identified in the UK, they say, is now prevalent in Italy, and the variant first identified in Brazil is showing small clusters in Italy. So these measures are being taken to help bring that rate of transmission down. The Prime Minister Mario Draghi spoke to the country yesterday. Here's a little bit of what he had to say. The memory of what happened last spring is still vivid, and we will do everything possible to prevent it from happening again. On the basis of scientific proof, the government has adopted restrictive measures today that we think are appropriate and proportionate. And Pam, the Prime Minister adding that he wants to expand and accelerate the vaccination program. Italy is currently vaccinating about 170,000 people a day. Prime Minister Mario Draghi saying he intends to triple that. Obviously, that would be a key element to help move Italy out of this situation. Pam? All right, Delia, thanks so much for that. And last.